Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. We are doing some more demo today, but check it out. We've got everything cleared out and we've got that ceiling trim finished. So let's check that out real quick. So you can see how it goes all the way around the room like that. And then when it comes to here, let me put you up there. You see it? Isn't that kind of cool? So anyways, I've got that done all the way around now. And so the rest of today, we're going to tear out this old floor, which I had installed a couple years ago. Uh, and then the trim around the bottom there and around the doors. Uh, that way we can get ready for the new flooring that comes in. And then also we have to build a fireplace on that wall. It's not going to be a real wood fireplace, an electric fireplace. It's going to look somewhat like this. It's going to be just a box in the wall, basically. And it's probably going to stick out like, I don't know, like 16 inches or so from the wall. Um, but it's going to have an electric fireplace here in the middle, probably about a 36 inch box or so. They haven't got it yet, so we'll figure out the size of that once we build the structure. And then I think they want some sort of rock on the face of it. So we're gonna see what we can do there. And then there's also going to be uh, a seating area here in front. Uh, this may end up just being all trimmed into some sort of wainscoting type deal, uh, but I'm not sure. And then there might be a hearth around here somewhere. But anyways, that's gonna be on the project of today sometime. Uh, but let's get started with a little montage of last night's cleanup because out there was just beautiful. So let's do that and we'll jump back into a time-lapse of the work we're gonna to do today. seen this before this is pretty cool so you see how the doors out here are opened all the way this is the first place I've ever seen it but check this out on the light switch you hit that and the doors will close pretty sweet they have a magnet behind them so they hold it on the wall but and magnet there pretty cool stuff I think but anyways might be boring but I figured I'd show it with you Ta-da! Check it out. All the flooring is gone. All the way in there, all the transitions, pieces between the doors and the other floors are gone. And so the room is all cleared out. So the next projects we have to do is get some drywall for up there. And then we have to get the framing lumber for this with some plywood. So that's gonna be awesome. So we'll go do that here shortly. But I want to let you in on a little secret. As a contractor, especially as a contractor that works by himself for the most part, you got to make sure that your client is happy with you. And it's not always easy, especially on a project of a bigger scale for one person. This is, isn't a huge job, but when you got hundreds of people looking at it every Wednesday and Sunday, if you're not making progress, they're going to get kind of irritated with you. Now, the people who are hired me for this job are super chill, so there's no chance of that happening. But to keep the church happy in this, in this uh, scenario, uh, you wanna make sure that you're doing some progress. So there's some things that I will delay as a contractor. I'll work on some nitpicky things, like that trim stuff. I did that first because that's nitpicky. It takes a long time. So they don't see the progress as much as if you tear out the entire floor. So when they walk in tonight, which is midweek service here on Wednesday, they're gonna come in and be like, man, he's got a lot done. And I'm not doing that to, to make myself look better necessarily. It's just a matter of making everyone happy. And so, 
Client's happy, I'm happy. So anyways, so we're gonna make a lot of progress today even though that flooring took like 15 minutes compared to eight hours of trimming on that. So anyways, just a little tip there. So we gotta go get the lumber for this and some more drywall because I ran out of drywall for that patch up there. So anyways, let's go do that. That's always fun. Okay guys, we have made it to Lowe's. We are at the loading yard. And it just went deathly quiet right when I started speaking. It's all this sawing and like talking going on over the loudspeaker. Oh, here's the music again, I guess. So I gotta go make a list of things I need and then I gotta go purchase it inside the store and then come back out and load it in the truck. So let's go do that. I'm inside Lowe's picking up windows uh, for one of the jobs I have, but sometimes you have to just do other jobs in the meantime. So a customer just gave me a a check and so I'm gonna deposit it. A little tip I have is that if a customer gives you payment to make sure you deposit it as quickly as possible that way it's not waiting it's not waiting on it on the account. So anyways let's deposit this real quick. Okay, we just bought like half a house um, and loaded it back in my truck. And it took me like three hours because the register shut down and I couldn't get it going again. So anyways, let's go back and unload this stuff before I get too tired to keep working. back and we have unloaded all of the two by fours that we're going to use for the fireplace. Uh, we have some nice finished three quarter inch plywood which we're going to build a welcome center kind of here on the end. This is just a very generic sketch but it's gonna look like this. It's gonna be basically a little countertop on top and there's gonna be some shelves on the inside but it's gonna have like a, a nice wainscot look on the outside. So anyways we're gonna build that probably tomorrow and we're gonna build it that way uh, we can move it kind of like a cabinet and then we'll move it and once we get to those the pot <laughs> the pot the spot that they uh, they want it then I'll screw it to the ground to the wall uh, that way we can figure out how big we want it and then this we're gonna figure out we're still waiting on the fireplace to figure out how big they want that but as soon as they decide I can start framing that portion of it and then we'll figure out if we're going to rock it on the outside or if we're going to do some sort of other wainscoting or something cool on the other side of it and then tomorrow we'll also try to do the drywall work up there and then maybe, just maybe, if we have a if we get really far in the day, then we'll start doing some mudding, but we'll see, that might not happen. So anyways, that's going to be the end of the video today. Uh, I have some other videos in the works, but this one I'm probably gonna post either tomorrow or the next day, which would be pretty soon. So anyways, as always, look in the description below, sign up for those, uh, those apps that I'm using. So if you don't like them, you can delete them, but if you do like them, then it's good for both of us because we both get a free stock on either of those. And then also there's also a GoFundMe which helps me buy camera gear or whatever in the future to keep going and making better videos with better uh, quality of sound and, and visual and all that stuff. So anyways, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video. God bless. All of you who don't mind a little overtime on the video and like knowing some extra information this is the tools these are the tools of the day that i'm going to explain the differences between so here is a impact and a drill and i'm going to show the differences real quick i'm not going to go in great detail but the advantages of each so the impact is used mostly for driving uh screws or uh lag bolts it's really easy it's it's compact so it fits in between a stud spacing really easily uh, pretend this is a stud in the wall and that's a stud in the wall. This fits nicer than a big old drill does. 
but they also have two different functions. And so this one hammers every time it's spinning. So it'll, when you, you'll hear it spin, but when it hits torque, it'll start hammering, which helps drive a screw in. As far as a drill, it just spins. And so you can still do the same job as this one. It's just, this is a little more efficient and smaller. And then a drill is more handy for drilling using drill bits. Uh, and then also this one is a hammer drill, so I can change the setting to the T there, which changes it to a hammer drill. And so it hammers while it drills. It's different than the hammering goes on in here. This is so you can get through concrete. So if you have a concrete drill bit and you stick it in the drill, it will hammer down into the concrete, which makes it nice. Uh, Cause you can't just really spin a hole into concrete very well. So a drill is also good for mixing, whereas this is not uh, capable really of mixing. And you can chuck anything that is a half inch or less inside of a drill. And so I can spin this all the way back. So I can spin it forward. Or you can just grab the end of it. And if you get the forward direction and you pull the trigger, it'll tighten the end. And if you turn, push the little lever here on the side to reverse, you hold the chuck, they call this the chuck. Uh, and you push the, push the trigger and it'll open up nice and wide so you can stick anything up to a half an inch in there. So, and the way you change the bit on this one <laughs> is you have that little sleeve on the front, you pull it up and this thing slides out and it has a little retainer clip like so. And then also these have a light on the front, which is nice when you're in tight spaces in the dark. You don't have to hold a flashlight and the impact of the drill. So these are both cordless uh, powered with the batteries there on the bottom. They're really nice. And then this one comes with a little clip on the side. So that is by no means a full explanation of what a drill and the impact does, but that's what the differences are between the advantage of having an impact and the drill. Anyways, thanks for watching. We'll catch you later.